Hello, I am Dr. Lorraine Schratz, a pediatric cardiologist at Massachusetts General Hospital for Children. A common symptom which brings young patients to a cardiologist is a rapid heartbeat. While there are some normal reasons, such as exercise, which can make a child's heart beat fast, when it occurs suddenly and the rate is very rapid, we are suspicious of the diagnosis of supraventricular tachycardia, otherwise known as SVT. Supraventricular tachycardia is an abnormal heart rhythm in which the heart rate is quite elevated, often above 200 and even up to 300 beats per minute. This is the most common heart rhythm problem in children and can occur in approximately one in 1,000 patients. This condition is not typically dangerous or life-threatening, but it's very upsetting when it occurs and can significantly disrupt a patient's lifestyle. I'm going to describe what SVT is, our typical approach to the diagnosis, and the treatment. To understand how SVT happens, first you need to understand the normal heartbeat. This is an image of the heart showing the two upper chambers called the atria and the two lower chambers called the ventricle. A heartbeat starts in the right upper chamber in a special area called the sinus node which sends out a signal that goes throughout those two upper chambers, excites those, and then in order for it to get to the lower chambers, has to go through a specialized area and allow the signal to go to the two lower chambers, exciting them and causing them to squeeze and cause a heartbeat. And usually that is the only way for that impulse to get to the lower chambers. It usually stops there until another impulse comes up from above and goes to below. With supraventricular tachycardia, there's an extra connection. We'll just put that there. And that's called an accessory pathway. After the impulse comes into the lower chambers, it can then flip back up into the upper chambers and create an electrical short circuit, starting to go around and around and around like that. In my office, I like to tell children to think of two rooms that are usually connected by a one-way door. Little guys come out the door in the sinus node and then go below to make a heartbeat. But when there's that extra door that's open, these little guys can run around like crazy, fun little loving kids and go around and around and around making the heartbeat really fast. Our job as pediatric cardiologists is to stop those energetic little guys from running around and causing our patients trouble. In some cases, the episodes of SVT happen infrequently, don't last long, and don't cause a patient too much trouble. For these patients, we may not have to give them any treatment, though we will show them maneuvers which can stop the SVT. If a child is symptomatic with dizziness or has longer, more frequent episodes, we generally have two options for treatment. The first option is to give them a medication which will make it less likely that the SVT will occur. These medications have been used safely in children for decades, but only offer a temporary fix to the SVT. Although infants and very young children may outgrow their SVT, this is less likely in older children. For these patients and those with particularly frequent or bothersome symptoms, there is a procedure called an electrophysiologic study with radiofrequency ablation, which offers the potential for a cure. This is done with a cardiac catheterization, placing specialized catheters through the blood vessels in the leg and into the heart to map out the electrical connections in the heart, identify the accessory pathway, and then apply energy to close that door so the patient will no longer be able to have tachycardia. This procedure is successful in about 95% of cases with low risk and good long-term safety. If you suspect your child of having SVT and symptoms last longer than 15 or so minutes or they are dizzy, bring them to immediate medical attention. If symptoms are not so severe, keep a record of them including the heart rate and what was happening when symptoms occurred, and talk with your child's pediatrician or family physician about seeing a cardiologist. At that visit, expect an electrocardiogram or EKG to be performed, additional monitoring to be discussed, 
and possibly an echocardiogram performed to take pictures of your child's heart. My colleagues and I in pediatric cardiology at Massachusetts General Hospital for Children would be honored to care for your child. Please call us at 508-757-7300.